Hey guys, this is Thomas from Stylized Station. And today, using Substance Painter, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make quick and speedy assets in just under 10 minutes. Now, this is just a little mini tutorial. If you want more tutorials, feel free to check out the 3D Artist Coloring Book. But either way, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so everything's loaded up, pre-baked, and ready to go. So first things first, let's tackle the wood itself. So let's see how it looks in the texture set list. So everything is going to be one um, uh, one section. So we're going to section everything out by folder. So let's go ahead and do that. Quickly create the wood. And I'm going to create another one for the metal. And the wood, we're going to add a fill layer. Change the roughness up a little bit so we got a nice stylized look. And let's get the base color into a nice brown with a bit more red in it, something like that. Great. So now we've got the wood base color set up. Let's go ahead and add a black mask to the folder and mask it out. We're now going to choose exactly all the assets that are going to be colored in brown. Using the UV fill, you can do this very, very quickly. Let's get each side. And the lighting's a little harsh because I'm using studio lighting, so we can always soften that up later. And that pretty much looks like it. So the wood is now masked out. So just like that, within a few minutes, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first is let's add some uh, color variation to this. So let's go ahead, black mask, add a fill layer, and let's add some cool grunge to it. Now, I kind of like the way that this one looks, so let's just give that a try. And that gives some nice white streaks. And we'll change it to a color very similar to the wood, maybe a little more saturated, just like that. And make sure you highlight everything but the color, or just the color, by clicking, clicking Alt Click. So just like that, we've got some nice color variation. And let's add some more. Maybe we need some more yellows in here. So add a black mask, add a fill. And let's go with something like this for now. And that's perfect, that adds some nice variation pretty much all over. And let's just do the color and make it a little more, maybe a little more, let's fill it color picker, a little more yellow, and a little darker. And there you go, just like that, you got a nice base. So let's, after that, let's add some ambient occlusion, add a black mask. Add a generator and let's add ambient occlusion. Invert it so it's just covering that and then let's change it to multiply. And now you can see we've got some nice dark ambient occlusion. And don't forget to turn off the color there as well. Now let's add some dirt and some more grunge. Add a generator, add a dirt mask. And now you can see what the dirt's covering. I kind of like the way it looks like that. Add some color, base color, and let's make this one, again, really dark. Great, done. Now let's add one more to fill layer. Let's add some more color variation as the final. Right click, add a filter. Soft light, make sure to remove all the colors. and that adds some nice color variation. Can't really see very well. Oh, I, that's why, because I had the fake light. And just like that, there we go, that's a little better. And it's a little harsh, so let's drop everything down. Just like that. Um, one thing we missed here, let's add some quick curvature. And the reason we're gonna add some curvature is because wood at the edges is always nice and worn out. So you may have missed what I just did, but black mask and then add a curvature generator, nice and quick. And then we can choose a nice light color without even really editing the mask itself because I kind of like the way this looks. So let's go into this brown and desaturate it even more, just like that. And if you wanna adjust the color, make it a little more red, a little more yellow, do whatever you want to do. I kind of like the way that looks just like that. 
And we've got some nice greens, yellows, browns, and whites in there as well. So that's pretty much wood, nice and quick. So let's go ahead and do the metal. And this time with the roughness for the base, we're gonna keep the roughness nice and low and the metallic all the way to one. Now the metal itself, we're gonna to need to add a black mask. And let's go ahead and select all of the metal pieces here, including these. These can all be the same color because this is just a quick little tutorial just so I can waste some time today because I'm bored. I want to share some more stuff with you guys. So one, two, three, four. And let's get these. One, two, three, four, five, six. And these guys, one, two, three, four. And honestly, this metal even might be good enough for some people, but we're going to take this to the next level. Um, so this is the base. And the same thing as last time, let's add some color variation. Add a fill and let's add some, we can do some purlin. And let's randomize it a little bit and change the color. And make sure the roughness and metallic is all the way to one. And for this, the base color, let's just lower the roughness slightly because it's nice to have that roughness variation on there. And then maybe we can add some blue because steel always looks good. It's got a little bit of blue tint in there, just like that. So it's not perfect and you can mess around with grunge maps, but that's a good start for now, just for a little demonstration. Let's go ahead and add a black mask and add some ambient occlusion as well. Add some, where are you, ambient occlusion, invert it. So you can see it's just starting to fill in the white edges and now we'll make it nice and dark by just adding a multiply. Just like that. And you can increase the roughness all the way. And since it's metallic, you can drop it, drop the color quite a bit. And up the metallic colors there. Great, pretty simple. Again, if you wanna add some dirt, it's a good way to add some roughness variation as well. So let's add some dirt, add a black mask, and let's add a dirt generator. And this is always good to use, especially on metal because dirt on the roughness um, or dirt on metal pieces is always a much higher roughness. So it's gonna add some nice color variation. So let's go ahead and add a bit of rust and it's always good that the rust and dirt is a little bit red. Again, for some more color variation. If you wanna see how it looks a little better, change it from 1024 to 228. Now we've got some nice detail on here. Some really awesome detail. And that's looking pretty good. So let's add one more thing. Let's add a baked lighting filter, just like the last one and turn this to soft light. Just the color. Since it's a little high to me, I could drop that a little bit. And that looks pretty good to me. I think this is coming in a little too hard. So let's just make sure only the color is selected when it comes to the baked lighting. Yeah, there you go. So we get some nice color variation coming down from the top. And that's pretty much it, guys. If you want to add some gradients, go for it. But I just wanted to make a quick video today to do a little demonstration to show how quickly you can make assets in Substance Painter using PBR and masks. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you want more tutorials like this that are actually in depth and share with you how to do it, how to transform your skills, feel free to pick up the 3D Artist Coloring Book. I'm also working on a beginner's course in Substance Painter starting today as well. So I'm looking forward to sharing that knowledge with you guys. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys transform into the artist you know you can make to be. So take care guys. No.